Yo, spread the word. Top shutters are back in full effect. <laughs> Thank y'all for tuning back in. It's your boy PBK Nines giving you that dog news we always do fair and unbiased. Some gonna like it, some ain't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It's free. Just tap that little button. Set your notification bell up to where when I drop the videos, you automatically get alerts. You know how that go with YouTube. Um, hit the like button before you get up out of here, you know, and hit the comments up. Today we talking about Hootens. Champion Butcher Boy. Who's champion Butcher Boy on the day's spotlight? All right, bred by Mr. Frank Fitzwater, Butcher Boy was born in Irving, Texas, June 4th, 1967. Now, Mr. Hooten obtained a Butcher Boy at six weeks of age. You know, he was just a little young pup. You know, he got him for working. $50, he did $50 worth of work for um, some horseshoe work for a guy, you know, who knew Mr. Frank. The guy knew Mr. Frank, and the guy knew Mr. Frank wouldn't sell a dog to anybody or even talk to anybody he did not know. He had to have a reference to deal with Mr. Frank Fitzwater, you know. So the guy introduced Mr. Hooten to Mr. Frank. And after Hooten was introduced to Mr. Frank, the deal was made, you know. He got his pup, he picked his pup out. Or, you know, the story goes, the pup, the pup picked him out. The pup went and locked on his pants leg and started shaking his pants leg. So that's the one he decided to pick. That's the one he left the house with. It was at this time that Mr. Hooten realized that Butcher Boy was a special dog. It was said that he left holes in, the, in his opponent the size of a shotgun hole. Looked like his opponent was shot with a shotgun. Now in 16 months, Hooten schooled him out against Carver's rosters, you know? And in like, I think 20 minutes, Carver picked him up. He said, um, you know, Butcher Boy was just too much, too big for him. And the story goes, he was. He was too big for him, you know. Now after Mr. Carver seen how impressive this dog was, they decided to free dog, you know. And after they free dog, seeing how impressive he was, Mr. Carver and uh, Mr. Hooten decided it was time to find him a, you know, find him a good match. All right. So they did a little calling, a little checking around, and all that, and they ended up getting in touch with Kennedy's Booger Red. They, they they hooked up with Kennedy's Booger Red. Now Danny Burton handled and conditioned. Booger Red for this particular, you know, competition or whatever. All right, and for the first 20 minutes, it was a pretty much even, you know, an even draw or whatever. But, butcher, um, butcher boy, a little for um, Booger Red. But at the 46 minute mark, it was Booger Red time to come across. Let him go. Booger Red fell to his face. He couldn't move no more, you know. And uh, momentarily, Butcher Boy was released. Finished him off. Finish him off, on to the second one. Now Butcher Boy's second would be in the great state of Mississippi in 1969 against Edwards Luke, who was a two-time winner at that time. It was said that Butcher Boy was scratching so hard that he knocked um, Luke's um, handler out the, of out the pit at least five times, you know? Said he was scratching so hard, coming out with so much intensity, so much power, that he knocked the handler out the box five times. Now the hard scratching continued on the minute. It's like every minute they were scratching from the corner, you know. And at 33 minutes, Edwards Luke couldn't do it. He couldn't take no more. He couldn't take no more. Butcher Boy was the winner. Two time. Now when Butcher Boy got his third, that was a special day in 1972. Special day in 1972, Butcher Boy out hunted uh, Corn Smokey. Now Corn Smokey was a son of Bully Son, all right? But on that same card that uh, Butcher Boy got his championship title, Bully Son was out hunting by his son, Benny Bob, on that same card. 
You know, so that's what made that whole little, you know, that whole little get up special, 1972. And don't forget all my bulldoggers out there. You know what I'm saying? The bond is just as important as the food you feed them dog when it comes to participating in sports. You know, like I always say, what team sports you see that the bond doesn't matter. Basketball, if the team don't like the coach, you know, we have problems. The team don't like different players, we have problems. Football, team don't like different players, we have problems. Team don't like the coach, we have problems. When the bond is there with the coach, when the bond is there with the players, what kind of team you have? You got a Super Bowl team, you got an NBA championship team. When the bond is there with them boxers, what you have? You have heavyweight champions, you have middleweight champions, lightweight champions. When that bond ain't there, you have knockouts. People getting knocked out, knocked across the ring, all kind of stuff. Teams getting out there, only winning one game out of 17 games in the season because the bond ain't there. Understand when it comes to these dogs, you got to have that bond. You know what I'm saying? It's about that bond. All right, shout out to all my subscribers, like I always say. And I had a few people ask, you know, being that we was talking about it, what is the rub? Is it poison? This is what the rub is. The rub is anything that is on your dog that ain't supposed to be on, no matter if it's. If you want my honest opinion, flea spray not even supposed to be on your dog when he's out in them activities hunting, you know, hunting throughout the woods and stuff like that. Your dog is supposed to be spanky, span, clean. Anything that's on your dog, you know, that's specifically used to deter the other dog from hunting with your dog, to make the other dog, he don't want to come around your dog, and to ultimately kill the other dog if they become, you know, somehow or another their bodies rub against each other or something like that, you know? Rub can be anything from alcohol, anything from frog piss. Rub can be many different things, not even poison, just something that your dog don't agree with. Anything that your dog don't agree with and it affects how your dog performs. You know what I'm saying? That's what a rub is. It can be, uh, you can melt chocolate candy down and rub them up with chocolate. If that's gonna stop the other dog from performing the way he needs to perform, then you rub him. That's a rub. There's no particular thing that's a rub. You know what I'm saying? Anything outside of your dog fur that's on him at that particular time. You know what I'm saying? You know what you're going at. You ain't supposed to have no flea spray on them, no none of that. You know what I'm saying? Nothing. No dust, no nothing. No flea powder, no none of that stuff. Spick and span clean already. Not waiting till you get to the show to get cleaned up. None of that. You're supposed to be already clean when you come to the show. Then you get your double clean. But anyway, man, shout out to my subscribers. Like I say, that's what a rub is. Anything that's on your dog that don't supposed to be on. Period. And at that particular time, nothing's supposed to be on. Period. You come in there with dried up soap on them, that's rough. Anything you got on them that ain't his hair or his skin, at that particular time, it was a rub. But anyway, I'm just giving y'all a little bit of that dog history. It's your boy, PBK9s. Y'all subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Hit that like button before you get up out of here. Don't forget to hit the like button before you get up out of here. Comment at the bottom. You know, I'm going to comment with you. It's your boy, PBK9s, and I'm about to here.